going on everybody so this is my impressions for the division 2 beta so a little bit of background right i did not buy the original division game at launch i purchased it much farther down the line but didn't end up beating it now i i usually wouldn't buy the sequel to a game that i uh if i didn't beat the original um but that mainly pertains to games that have like a, a really deep story and narrative that you need to understand. And Division really isn't that case. There is a story per se, but that's really not what the game is about. And you don't even need to know the original uh, story of the Division to pick up the Division Two and um, you know just and just and just play it, right? And the reason I didn't buy the original Division at launch is because the game just simply didn't connect with me. I just really wasn't having fun. They, re I played the demo. They had a demo that they released right before the game came out. I played it on PC, played it on PS4, and and I wanted to like the game so much because it's 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 in the vein of type of games I like. You know, third person cover shooters um, with a little tactical um, and strategic element to it. So that's that's my type of game, and I and it, and it took place in New York City, my hometown. So everything about the game on paper, I I liked, I wanted, you know, or at least I wanted to like, but it just didn't end up con connecting with me. So I decided to skip it. Now the Division Two is about to come out, and I think I'm actually gonna buy this game day one. Um, because I think a lot of the things I did not like about the original that didn't really connect with me, um, I think they improved upon it in, in, in this game based on what I played in the beta. And I, I walked into this game having a diff, a little bit of a different expectation and, uh, understanding than when I played, you know, played the demo for the original. So first of all, starting with the story which once again isn't going to be anything anything deep um we know in in new york it was like it was a virus um you know that spread through uh, throughout new york city i can't remember exactly how i can't remember if it was the water if it was the water supply or 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 another thing um but it you know created this kind of like apocalyptic event and society went to shit and the division uh were, were these group of agents trying to organize society and make it civil again. And now the, the, the Division 2 takes place seven months later um, in Washington, D.C., uh, in which uh, somewhat of a similar story, there's a civil war going on between survivors and, uh, you know, street gangs. I think they're mainly called uh, the hyenas in this game. Um, and once again, the Division is here to bring order to society. Um, so me personally, I don't really play these type of games for story. So that's not really very important to me necessarily, because even as you play through the game and play through missions, the, the story really doesn't complement or connect a lot of the events that much. It kind of, it, it's kind of more of a purpose than it, than it is an actual like story or exposition or narrative. Right. So the story is what it is. Don't expect anything much from that. I saw a lot of people, um, you know, watching videos of the of the gameplay saying that there's a visual downgrade. I honestly think some people, when it comes to certain games, well, I, I think pe most some people just look for downgrades where there aren't any more, um, where there where there aren't even any downgrades. And I understand we live uh, in, in a time where it does seem like a lot of games are downgraded after we initially see them, but the Division Two, I don't think is one of them. Um, the division, the original division, absolutely, I think, was downgraded from what we initially saw. But from what I seen in the division two trailers and the videos, and from what I played, no, this this seems pretty one to one with what what we saw. So I think the game definitely looks good. You know, the vegetation, the the environment, and the and the, and the building structures in Washington D.C. looks good. The character models are solid. You know, the details on the weapons are really nice. Uh, the lighting and shadows and textures overall, uh, pretty crispy and and uh, just just pristine. Um, there, they do need to fix, and I assume you know this is just product of uh, of the beta. Even though the game comes out in like what is it a month or two? Um, I think next month. Uh, there are some pop-ins and uh, you know. I think uh, issues with the draw distance, 
um, but it has all the bells and whistles in the menu in, 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 the, in the options that you would expect from the PC version because I am playing uh, on PC. I'm able to play the game at uh, at high settings at 1440p uh, at 60 frames. When I put everything up to max, then uh, it it goes from like 45 frames to 60. So I can't play on max. I can play on high, right? Now the most important aspect of the Division Two, uh, which would determine whether I liked it or not, was the combat. And I did end up liking the combat once again, um, partly because I believe I set my expectations that this game is going to be an RPG loot shooter. I guess is the best way to describe it. You know, enemies are going to be bullet sponges. Um, you're going to have to, you know, it, it's about leveling up your, your character and everything like that. So don't expect enemies to die realistically. So that helped temper my expectations. And I did end up liking, you know, the combat because the weapons feel good. I like the mods and, and attachments that you, that you could find and just the overall, you know, armor. I, I, I like feeling like my character is leveling, leveling up. Um, through every mission and every uh, enemy encounter I go through. I like finding uh, new armor and uh, just, just new equipment to attach. You know, that feels very rewarding. Um, you know, when you attach the mods and everything like that, and they actually, you know, you can actually see it on your weapon and you can actually feel the difference because that's very important um, to actually uh, feel noticeable um, differences from when the attachment wasn't there to when to when you add it. The weapons sound like they have impact. You know, I think that's very important to me. Is if I don't feel like weapons are having impact and it doesn't sound like it, then that really puts that really puts me off, right? Because it, then it feels like I'm like I'm shooting, you know, cardboard and and not actual enemies. So I like the the, uh, the weapon sound effects. I didn't like that there's no stealth takedowns. I know this is not a stealth game, but there are, you know, sometimes you'll come across an enemy that's unaware of you. And I'm like, why can't I, you know, take this enemy down stealthily? I believe there are um, silencers or suppressors in the game, but, you know, I, I just don't see any reasons why there can't be any like stealth takedowns, you know, so I can remain unnoticed as long as possible uh, through an encounter. Um, of course, the game has, you know, some, it, it, the, the recoil is strange because it seems to be recoil off the first shot with most weapons. And then the recoil seems to just go away completely. The recoil only exists on the very first round and then it's completely gone. It, it's very strange that I think that obviously ne needs to be adjusted. Um, the movement is good. It's not as agile as I wanted it to be because the animations seem to move in slow motion, right? Um, like vaulting over an object is very slow. Even rolling, you can like watch your character roll and it's like he's, it's like his movement while he's in the rolling animation just slows down. And it's like you can count the animations of how, you know, long it takes him to roll and all that and, and just do any type of animation. Uh, the cover mechanics are good, you know, moving from cover to cover, vault, uh, vaulting, moving around cover. They have all the mechanics that a third-person cover shooter uh, should have. Um, but sometimes actually getting off of cover can be a little bit difficult. Is like you're you're a little bit it's it's a little bit sticky. Um, I guess you 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 can uh, refer to it as. Um, if you want to like manually pull off of cover, it's a little bit hard. You can press a button to pull off of cover, but you know, sometimes like, you know, I like the, I like the uh, third person cover shooters where it's just easy to like move in the opposite direction of the cover and just pull off of it. And the way I measure the fun of games like this is how fun it actually is um, playing by yourself, right? Because games, I, I, I know, the uh you know the the whole draw and to the to this type of game is playing co-op i understand that but to me i measure it by how fun it is playing alone because if you can play it alone and have fun then it's definitely going to be fun you know it's going to be more fun playing with others and that means the game itself is fun and is and it doesn't completely and solely rely on the the interaction with other players for the game to be fun right if it could be fun on its own then it's not using 
you know, the the co-op, the co-op as, as a crutch. And I did have fun playing this game alone. And then I played a mission with, uh, you know, three other people on my team. And this game is going to have eight player raids, by the way, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so I, I, I definitely had fun playing with, with other players. And but I, I don't think it's um it's as strategic as I thought it would be, because at least not at least not the missions I played, which is, it, you know, it's very limited in, in, in the beta. Obviously, it, there wasn't really any need for communication. Right. It wasn't like we had to strategically play uh, one person, play this way. The other person, you know, do this. It was like everybody just shoot. You know, like that's all it really boiled down to. Everybody just shoot enemies. Nobody had to like focus on uh, on a sp particular task or do uh, or, you know, do something special. It was just everybody shoot enemies typically is what it boiled down to. Um, and, and, you know, there was a lot of busy work around the map to do, um, you know, a lot of random side mission and, and side task, you know, typical busy work in a in a uh, sandbox or open world type of game like that. Some of, you know, and, and I enjoyed, you know, doing some of it. A lot of it is like a distraction that keeps you from doing some main missions as as we, as we know, which, which is pretty typical in games like this. But I overall enjoyed it. Um, I played PvP which was another concern of mine, and I liked PvP. I actually liked it a lot. I was surprised at how much I liked it. Um, there's going to be more modes. It was do it was Domination. There was Skirmish. Um, I just played Skirmish. I didn't get a, place, a chance to play Domination, but I liked it. The map, there, there's very limited maps. I think it's like two maps in, in, in the beta. So the one map that I played, uh, I forgot what it was called, but it wasn't very well designed, actually. I think it was kind of poorly designed, a poorly designed map. But the gameplay was just, you know, really, it was just really fun. Um, and I think it'll, it'll be really fun playing uh, with three other people. I, you know, I did obviously play with a team, but not anybody I knew. It was a bunch of randoms. So I think when I actually get a chance to play with people I know, I think that's going to be a, a lot of fun, actually. Um, so, yeah, I think PvP is, is, is definitely fun. It, it took a while to adjust because just like in the actual game, players are somewhat bullet sponges because you have armor and then you have to, you know, uh, deplete their armor to get to their actual health. And then you have to utilize your uh, skills that you unlock in the game. Like, for example, I unlock the seeker mine and, and, and the turret and the um, and the drone, things like that. You have to learn how to utilize them pro properly against, you know, uh, actual um, people in the online and Pretty much, mo as far as I see, everything you unlock in the regular game actually carries over to the PvP. I'm not sure if that includes perks because you know that would, in uh, if everything carried over, that would that would create an imbalance in the game because then someone who doesn't have everything unlocked versus someone who has a lot of things unlocked that would obviously create an, an imbalance. So I'm not exactly sure how they uh you know put everybody on an even playing playing field uh in, re in regards to that but the game seemed pretty balanced to me um so 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 far at least in the, in the pvp and like i said i'm enjoying it um they give you a little bit of a sample of the end game content which is good because you know uh one of the problems with the original division that i read uh was that you know after you beat the game there wasn't that much uh end game content that wasn't ready uh, so they uh, are definitely preparing a lot of endgame content to be uh, their day one when the game launches. Um, I didn't get a chance to play in the dark zone. I believe that that's available, and there's. Uh, but I know there's going to be different type of dark zones where you can go in. Um, Previ in the previous game, uh, there was a dark zone where you had to like get to the the end of the match, I believe, and. Um, to actually get the loot. Now there's a different dark zone where you can go in and leave whenever you want uh, w with your loot. So there's different dark zones and everything like that. Um, the biggest complaint about the the division I have, and this, this carries over from the first game, right? From what I played. And this is something that m a lot of people have complained about, uh, even who you know were big fans of the original, is the inventory system. The inventory, the stations, the maps, the menus. The only way to describe this is an absolute clusterfuck. Moving and sorting through the, the division inventory system 
is like trying to crack the goddamn Da Vinci Code. What you remember? You know, like the Twitter memes where it's like the person. What was, what was it? Jack, uh, the dude, the dude, the dude from The Hangover, um, or Charlie Day when they're like trying to crack the code and you see all the equations and and the ma- and, and the math. Uh, going on in their head that's what it's like it's like it's information overload it has to be the most convoluted inventory system i've ever seen in gaming like there's so many goddamn menus so many things you have to it's like the goddamn xbox dashboard like the worst one the worst xbox dashboard i don't know what version it was where you had to i don't know press where if you wanted to send something to Twitter, you had to press like 10 buttons and move through this menu. I got lost in the goddamn inventory system. I was like, holy shit. There's so much information and it's it's so poorly organized. And it's like, and I think it's because they try to give you too much information. There's just so much to look at on the screen and you're trying to like understand everything. And, and I've been playing games a long time. And, you know, I've dealt with complex systems and inventories, but this one is just, it's like, bro, what the fuck am I looking at? It's its so, it's so confused. As I played the game more, it became easier to, like, understand and, and, and sort through it and because I kind of knew what things were that I was looking for. But it's still, I don't know if you, I don't know if you actually get used to it. It's just way too much information on one screen and at each screen way too much information and it's just bro y- y'all need to clean this up y- y'all need to clean this up it- it- it's way too much simplify the inventory system and i th- i just think it's it comes from them putting too much in the game that which results in you having to put too much in the inventory system which a lot of, i don't think everything is relevant i don't think everything is relevant but that's that's probably the biggest problem I have with the game is is the inventory system. The, and I think the world is a little bit better designed, and being in Washington D.C. Uh, allowed for that um, because you know it probably has a little bit more wide open areas than New York's tighter, smaller streets. And and one other thing that's missing is a feature called X um, input uh, in the controller settings menu of the game. The Division One had it. It's not in the beta, at least. I hope it's in the uh, final game. And pretty much what it does is it allows the game to only read the input from the third party program you're using to use the controller in. Um, and that allows you to customize your layout, you know, cause I like to use the, the, the L1 R1 to shoot instead of uh, the shoulder buttons. And right now I, I pretty much can't do that, I believe. So yeah, but besides that, I really enjoyed the beta. So that's my first impressions. Let me know what y'all think. I'm out of here. Peace.